Hello students, I hope you are enjoying these study videos as much as I am enjoying these in creating one. So if you want to watch my previous videos, then make sure you check that link in the description box. If you find any problem with the explanation in the video or you want to add something extra information to it, then make sure to leave that suggestion or information into the comment section. So let's move on to the topic which we are discussing from the previous videos that is friction. Now we are going to discuss the next topic which is friction a necessary evil. So here is the question why we are calling friction a necessary as well as evil at the same time. This is what we are going to discuss here. So let's jump into it. Recall now some of your experiences. Is it easier to hold an earthen pot or a glass tumbler? Suppose the outer surface of the tumbler is greasy or has a film of cooking oil on it. Would it become easier or more difficult to hold it? Just think, would it be possible to hold the glass at all if there is no friction? Recall also how difficult it is to move on a wet muddy track or wet marble floor. Can you imagine being able to walk at all if there were no friction? You could not write with a pen or pencil if there were no friction. When your teacher is writing with chalk on the blackboard, its rough surface rubs off some chalk particle which sticks to the blackboard. Could it happen if there were no friction between the chalk and the blackboard? If an object started moving, it would never stop if there were no friction. Had there been no friction between the tires of the automobiles and the road, they could not be started or stopped or turned to change the direction of motion. You could not fix a nail in the wall or tie a knot. Without friction, no building could be constructed. On the other hand, friction is an evil too. It wears out the materials whether they are screws, ball bearings or soles of shoes. You must have seen worn out steps of foot over bridges at railway stations. Friction can also produce heat. Vigorously rub your palms together for a few minutes. How do you feel? When you strike a matchstick against the rough surface, it catches fire. You might have observed that the jar of a mixer become hot when it is run for a few minutes. You can cite various other examples in which friction produces heat. In fact, when a machine is operated, heat generated causes much wastage of energy. We shall discuss the way of minimizing friction in the following section. So, the next topic is 12.4 Increasing and Reducing Friction. As you have seen in the previous section, friction is desirable in some situations. Have you ever thought why the sole of your shoes is grooved? It is done to provide the shoes better grip on the floor so that you can move safely. Similarly, the treaded tires of cars, trucks and bulldozers provided better grip with the ground. We deliberately increase friction by using brake pads in the brake system of bicycles and automobiles. When you are riding a bicycle, the brake pads do not touch the wheels. But when you press the brake's lever, these pads arrest the motion of the rim due to friction. The wheel stops moving. You might have seen that kabaddi players rub their hands with soil for a better grip of their opponents. Gymnasts apply some coarse substance on their hands to increase friction for better grip. In some situations, however, friction is undesirable and we would want to minimize it. Why do you sprinkle fine powder on the carom board? You might have noticed that when a few drops of oil are poured on the hinges of a door, the door moves smoothly. A bicycle and a motor mechanic uses grease between the moving parts of these machines. In all the above cases, we want to reduce friction in order to increase efficiency. When oil, grease or graphite is applied between the moving parts of a machine, a thin layer is formed there and moving substances do not directly rub against each other. Interlocking of irregularities is avoided to a great extent and movement becomes smooth. The substances which reduce friction are called lubricants. In some machines, 
it may not be advisable to use oil as lubricant an air cushion between the moving part is used to reduce friction now you might have a question like can we reduce friction to zero by polishing surfaces or using large amount of lubricants so the answer is friction can never be entirely eliminated no surface is perfectly smooth some irregularities are always there you must have seen attaches and other pieces of luggage fitted with rollers even a child can pull such pieces of luggage why is it so let us find out take a few pencils which are cylindrical in shape place them parallel to each other on a table place a thick book over it now push the book you observe the pencils rolling as the book moves do you feel it easier to move the book in this way than to slide it do you think that resistance to the motion of the book has been reduced have you seen heavy machinery being moved by placing logs under it when one body rolls over the surface of another body the resistance to its motion is called the rolling friction rolling reduces friction it is always easier to roll than to slide a body over another that is the reason it is convenient to pull the luggages fitted with rollers can you now understand why wheel is said to be one of the greatest inventions of mankind since the rolling friction is smaller than the sliding friction sliding is replaced in most machines by rolling by the use of ball bearings common examples are the use of ball bearings between hub and the axles of ceiling fan and bicycles you know that air is very light and thin yet it exerts frictional force on objects moving through it similarly water and other liquid exerts force of friction when objects move through them in science the common name of gases and liquids is fluids so we can say that fluids exert force of friction on objects in motion through them the frictional force exerts by fluid is also called drag the frictional force on an object in a fluid depends on its speed with respect to the fluid the frictional force also depends on the shape of the object and the nature of the fluid it is obvious that when objects move through fluids they have to overcome friction acting on them in this process they lose energy efforts are therefore made to minimize friction so objects are given special shapes where do you think the scientists get hints for these special shapes from nature of course birds and fishes have to move about in fluids all the time their bodies must have evolved to shapes which would make them not to lose much energy in overcoming friction look carefully at the shape of an aeroplane do you find any similarity in its shape and that of a bird in fact all vehicles are designed to have shapes which reduce fluid friction so what you have learned from this video number 1 friction is important for many of our activities number 2 friction can be increased by making a surface rough number 3 the sole of the shoes and the tires of the vehicles are treaded to increase friction number 4 the friction is sometimes undesirable number 5 friction can be reduced by using lubricants number 6 when one body rolls over another body rolling friction comes into play rolling friction is smaller than the sliding friction number 7 in many machines friction is reduced by using ball bearings and number 8 fluid friction can be minimized by giving suitable shapes to bodies moving in fluids So now you are able to give the answers of these questions. Here you can see number one, friction produces dash, and number two, sprinkling of powder on the carom board dash friction. What is the answer? You can write the answer below into the comment section or wait for it. So the answer is friction produces heat. Sprinkling of powder on the carom board reduces friction. So if you already know the answer then you are a genius. So the next question is four children were asked to arrange forces due to rolling static and sliding frictions in a decreasing order. Their arrangements are given below. Choose the correct arrangement. 
So as you can see, we have four options available. All you have to do is to arrange the forces of friction in such a way that the higher the value of friction comes first, the lowest the value of friction comes at the end. So what according to you is the answer should be? If you know the answer, just write below into the comment section or wait for it. So if you write option C, then you are genius. So the answer is C, static, sliding and rolling. Next question is, Alida runs her toy car on dry marble floor, wet marble floor, newspaper and towel spread on the floor. The force of friction acting on the car on different surfaces in increasing order will be. So again, we have four options available. All you have to do is to arrange the forces of friction in increasing order. That means you have to arrange the forces of friction in such a way that the lower the value of the friction comes in the first place and the higher the value of the friction comes at the last. So what according to you is the answer? Write below into the comment section or wait for the answer. So if you choose option A, then you are a genius. So the answer is A wet marble floor, dry marble floor, newspaper, and towel. So the next question is, suppose your writing desk is tilted a little, a book kept on it starts sliding down. Show the direction of frictional force acting on it. So if you paid a little attention to my previous video, then you should be able to give the answer of this question. So the answer of this question is, Frictional force always acts opposite to the direction of motion of an object. The next one is, you spill a bucket of soapy water on a marble floor accidentally. Would it make it easier or more difficult for you to walk on the floor? And why? So, if you have an experience like this one, then you might be able to answer this question. What happened here is, if there is a soapy water on the floor, it will create a thin film of water which prevents the interlocking of the surfaces together. In this case, the two surfaces are the floor and the shoes. As a result, it reduces friction as well as makes it more difficult for you to walk on the floor. So the next question is, explain why sportsmen use shoes with spikes. This is easy. Sportsmen use shoes with spikes to increase the force of friction between the shoes and the ground. The increased force of friction gives them a better grip while running. Next question is, Iqbal has to push a lighter box and Seema has to push a similar heavier box on the same floor. Who will have to apply a larger force and why? The answer is clear from the statement that Sima has to apply larger force in order to push the similar heavy box on the same floor. As we know that she is trying to push the heavier box, so is the static friction comes into play. Because of the weight of the box, there is a strong surface interlock between the box and the floor. And this is the reason she has to apply greater force if she wants to move the box from its rest position. So the next question is, explain why the sliding friction is less than the static friction. In order to answer this question, you should be able to define sliding friction as well as static friction if you watch my previous video. So what it is exactly? The force required to overcome friction at the instant an object starts moving from rest is a measure of static friction. On the other hand, the force required to keep the object moving with the same speed is a measure of sliding friction. When the box starts sliding, the contact point on its surface do not get enough time to lock into the contact point on the floor. So the sliding friction is slightly smaller than the static friction. So the next question is, give examples to show that friction is both a friend and a foe. This is quite a simple question to answer because friction is helping us in lots of ways. The first thing is, without friction, you will not be able to drive a car. And without friction, you will not be able to hold your grip on anything. Without friction, you will not be able to light the matchstick. And without friction, you will not be able to write with pen or pencil. And there are lots of examples that you can see in real life, which shows that friction is our friend. On the other hand, Friction is our foe. 
The reason behind this, when the machine runs due to the friction, there is a heat generation as a result loss of energy. And one more thing, friction wears out material such as screws, ball bearings and soles of shoes. And there are lots of examples that you can see in real life which shows that friction is our foe, enemy or evil. So the next question is explain why objects moving in fluids must have special shape. As we know that when objects move through fluids, they have to overcome friction acting on them. In this process, they lose energy. Efforts are therefore made to minimize friction, so objects are given special shapes. So students, this is the end of the chapter friction and I hope you enjoyed this video a lot and got lots of useful information as well. In the end, I would like to request you, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button, like and share. It will keep me motivated to post more videos like this. I will see you in the next video. Till then, stay safe and motivated. You are watching CAD Camp Station, signing out for now.